Today I'm going to revisit solar calculator for an off-grid system, whether it be a motorhome, uh, just a, a small camping trailer, or you know, full-size motorhome such as mine that I live in, uh, or an off-grid cabin. Hi, welcome to Dave's corner of the world. Have a great day. So here's a few um, pages that I'm, I'm going to go through. Oh, by the way, anytime you see a, a red carrot like this, just put your cursor over the top of it and something will pop up right by the side of it to give you a little bit more clue what that carrot does. And everywhere there's a carrot, something will pop up. All right, first we need a power audit. Two pages, A, C, and D, C. Why do we need a power audit? Well, it's quite simple. You can't possibly create a solar array and battery bank if you don't know how much power you use. You have got to know how much power you use to create anything. So that's what we're doing here with the power audit. Okay, the next thing down is how much PV and battery bank we're actually going to need after we get done the power audit. Cost of your application. Now you've got a toaster that takes 900 watts and a coffee maker that say takes 650 watts. How much does that really take? Well, when you talk about wattage, that's 650 watts per hour on a coffee maker. Now we all know it doesn't take an hour to make coffee. It takes about eight or nine minutes. Web links that I use almost every day. So let's just kind of jump into it. Go down here to the 120 volt power audit. So why have I got this up here? To show you how much power it really takes when you're using a TV. Now you need to get what's called a watt meter. I got mine off of eBay. I think it was maybe $35, something like that. That way you're going to know. Now on the back of the TV, it'll say it takes 40 watts to power it. But what it doesn't tell you is that it takes 0.3 watts when the television is turned off. What? When it's turned off, it's turned off. No, it's not. When it's turned off, you're still using power. All right, let's just say that we're using this TV for four hours a day. Now that means we're gonna use in four hours, we're gonna use 184 watt hours of power. Well, the rest of the 20 hours that's not turned on at 0.3 watts is gonna use 6.9 watt hours. All that needs to be calculated in. Needs to be calculated in for the DVD recorder, uh, for everything that's almost everything in your house, unless you unplug it, is going to use some sort of power, even if it is turned off. So let's uh, let's take a look at this number right here. Well, this one right here. This is 1710.8. I'm not going to use the TV. It's unplugged. So I'm going to put zero there and enter. Now, this is 1710.8. This is zero and enter. Okay, so see, we've dropped quite a bit right there just by doing that. Okay, now in my motorhome, actually, I have two dorm type refrigerators. Only one of them is plugged in, the other one is unplugged. And I have a chest type deep freeze. Well, how do I know how much power those are pulling? Well, on the chest type deep freeze, I plugged in my watt meter and left it for 10 days. And I divided whatever number that was by 10. I divided that number, whatever that was, by 24 to come up with 25 watts per hour. Right here. Watts used per hour. How many hours a day is it used? Well, you've got to have a refrigerator and a deep freeze turned on for 24 hours a day. So you put them in and that 25 watt of power times 24 is 690 watt hours of power. Now, let's think about this for a minute. I have 12 100 watt panels on my motorhome. That means it's going to take seven of those one 
hour every day just to replenish the battery bank for the deep freeze. Wow, takes a lot of power. Okay, Wi-Fi, a Wi-Fi that I've had from Verizon since I think 06, 05, two watts hours of power every hour. So that's 55 watt hours uh, of power. Now, if you notice right away quick, two times 24 is supposed to be 48. But look down here, 15% inefficiency for the inverter is figured in. That's why it shows 55.2 watt hours of power. Okay. So then laptop, if I run it for five hours a day, it takes 37 watts. That's 212 watts. If I run it 24 hours a day, watch what happens. Watch this number here. Instead of 212, now it's over a thousand. Five hours, I think is what it was. Anyway, all these numbers right here added up together is, is this. This one and this is added up to give you this much hourly hours in your 120 volt power audit. Now we were talking about a coffee pot a little bit ago. How much does it really cost to make pot of coffee? A pot of coffee should be made in about 10 to 12 minutes. 0. 0.6 is five minutes point one two is ten minutes enter and it's going to take 93.2 watts now if you notice after i type in how many hours it's going to take to for my application to run the program automatically figures how much wattage it's going to take well i've got a rocket stove i'll link that rocket stove to the end of this video and that's what i normally use for my coffee making. All right, so let's go ahead and put this back to zero. Down below, scroll down, and we have lots of room for things that's not on the list. Uh, a window fan speed, high, medium, and low. Tower computer, I don't have that listed up there, I don't think, that takes 100 watts. My, my uh, tower and monitor, I think, takes about 115 to 120 watts both of them. So you can have all these things listed down here that you might want to put into your solar array sometimes uh, and, and that'll just let you know how much power things are, are going to take. Okay, let's go to the 12 volt section. Again, I live in a motorhome. <clears throat> a lot of the stuff that I use is 12 volts. Now your power inverter. Power inverter in a motorhome takes 42 watts. If I ran that 24, and it's huge. It's a big one. If I run that 24 hours a day, watch this cell right here. Boom, over a thousand watts. That again is 10 of the panels on my roof working at 100% efficiency, which they don't, for one hour. That's just way too much power. So I don't use that one. I've got a 2000 watt inverter that takes 10.6 watts. I run that 20, not the 42 watts. Okay, so anyway, um, my smaller inverter, that's right, where I have my refrigerator and deep freeze. Most everything in the house runs on this inverter right here. So of course, it's gotta be running 24 hours a day. And just to make it operate itself, it takes 255 watts per day. I've got a smaller inverter thousand watt inverter for my laptop and or tower computer those run on this 1000 watt inverter that would, which takes uh, 6.4 watts per hour times 24 anyway it's a hundred and hundred and fifty three point six watt hours just to make the inverter operate even if my computers are turned off. Okay, we go down here to uh, the kitchen lights. I don't very often use the kitchen lights. I use the kitchen lights over the sink. Maybe not quite 15 minutes a day, which is 0.8 watt hours of power. Because that particular light only takes four watts of power. If I use it four 
if I used it one hour, it would be four watt hours of power, but I'm only using it not quite a quarter of an hour. Bathroom light mirror, I gotta shave once in a while, so I use that about 15 minutes a day. That, I also use that when I'm taking a shower, so that's probably about, about accurate. And now, water pump. I'm hooked up to water here, but if I used the water pump, I'd have to deter, I'd have to say, well, how much do I use it? Maybe 0.15 hours per day. That's another 13 watts that's added on. I don't use it, I'm hooked up to water here. So I don't need that. Now in the winter time, when I'm running a furnace, my propane furnace, if I run the propane furnace for eight hours, I figure the, the forced air furnace, which is 12 volts, the furnace motor is actually gonna run four hours during that eight hour period. So I gotta type that in. That's another 375 watt hours that I've gotta create in the middle of the winter which you don't get as much sun in the middle of winter because the sun comes up later and goes down earlier. So, but you gotta figure that in. You gotta figure everything in that you're gonna use. At the end of the day here, we're looking at 2,388 watts. Let's say 2,390 watts. That's how much wattage I use per day in the motorhome. That's 2,390. So we'll go to the next page. PVC and battery size, 2,390. Hit enter. Now this calculator calculates in two different ways. This graphic shows you approximately, and, and actually this has been figured over the last 25 years. This has been averaged over about 25 year period. So I live, right about here in south central New Mexico. Five and a half hours of sunshine, they say, and it's right on the line between five and a half and six. So what I did was I put 5.8 hours over here. This shows watts of PV for cha to charge your battery bank. Well, I've got 1200 watts of solar on the top of my motorhome. That should be enough to charge my battery bank. That is figured by this graphic right here. Most of us want to be a little bit more precise than that, so we come down here at this one. Shows your battery bank should be this size. 1,266 amp hours. I've got 600 amp hours. But this is for two days. Well, since I live out in the middle of the desert, I really don't need that much extra battery power. Besides that, I just don't have room, nor I don't want to put that much weight in my motorhome. Those lead acid batteries are really, really heavy. Okay, so down here you can see uh, 1,033, 36 watts. I've got 1,200. So I'm well okay for that. I'm actually between uh, 5 and 10 percent of charge. So I'm okay. Now, if you want three days of battery storage, a lot of battery storage and a lot of solar to charge those batteries. Okay, we'll go over here to uh, how much does your application cost? Okay, here's where we're, we're talking 650 watts, watch used by application, 650. 650, hit enter. This is how much your coffee pot will take in 10 minutes if you're figuring it on 14 cents on grid that's what i pay for my power 14 cents a kilowatt hour if i use it for 10 minutes a day then it's going to cost me per day it's going to cost me 1.5 cents per day if i do that every day for a month it's going to cost me 46 cents per month if I use that coffee pot one time every day for a year, it's going to cost me $5.54. That's just quite a bit of money. But, and then, and then and this, this also shows difference. Uh, like say if we was using a 100 watt light bulb, 100 watt 
light bulb, for instance. Type in 100 here, hit enter. And if you're going to use that 100 light bulb for, I don't know, let's just say four hours a day, it's going to cost 5.6 cents per day. It's going to cost $20.45 a month if you use it four hours a day. But this is what's scary. If you use that 100 watt light bulb, leave it turned on 24 hours a day for a year, it's going to cost you $122. That's a lot of money at 14 cents a kilowatt hour. And that's what I'm, that's what I pay. Down here, if you don't know the wattage, you need the wattage to figure out all this. If you don't need the, don't know the wattage, some applications say, well, my, uh, machine takes uh, 10 amps at 120 volts so it takes 10 amps of power at 120 volts that means it's 1200 watts of power if you have an application like that might be um, a small heater you know a little space heater so now you need to put in 1200 watts up into here 1200 and hit enter now if you use that for two hours that's going to cost you 33 cents a day just for two hours that's not even enough to warm up the bedroom okay so that's how you use this we will go over here web links these are links that i use almost every day what's happening i started this site december 7th of 2014 or quit adding to it 5 11 of 19. i will probably add more to it but i don't know of anything i need to change at this moment so that's kind of the way the power audit works and we'll go back to the home page that should be all there is to know about this program there is a link in the description below that's a free download so you can download it and use it there's nothing in this i created this spreadsheet myself uh, there's no tracking in this microsoft access spreadsheet uh, microsoft excel spreadsheet there's no tracking there's nothing at all that's going to harm your computer if you want some more information here's my phone number right here just leave me a message and i'll get back with you just as soon as i possibly can in the meantime thanks for watching have a great day see you next time Please subscribe, hit the bell to get notified every time I post a new video.